What's the word, y'all? Whoa! This series has completely turned upside down. The Minnesota Timberwolves went into Denver for the first two games of the series and looked unstoppable, dominating our defending champions, and then things flipped. They go to Minnesota, and the very first game, the Denver Nuggets punched them in the mouth. The home crowd couldn't. I ain't hear a peep out of the home crowd. Game number four, similar things, and they go back to Denver. And everybody knows that game number fives are the most important one, especially if it's a 2-2 series, right? The team that wins a game number five in a 2-2 series wins the series like 88% of the time or something. So this is as crucial of a game as it can get. And Denver just does it. More specifically, Nikola Jokic just had one of his best one of his best playoff performances of his career. I don't know what the fight 40, 10, and 0 assists. He's the first person to do it since Chris Paul. The game literally just wrapped up, so I don't even know what the final stat line is. Just know that Jokic was a dog and showcasing again why he is the best player in the world. This is so, man, this is why I love playoff basketball because it, it literally is as close to a chess match as you could get without it being actual chess. The first two games of the series, I had never in my lifetime seen Nikola Jokic be this frustrated or look this uncomfortable on a basketball court. And Anthony Edwards was the best player in the series for the first two games. And now it has shifted back to Nikola Jokic being the best player. And, and my, uh, Michael Nori slash Chris Finch, in this game, they tried so many different things. I cannot go back to rewatch this in the morning to just kind of count out how many different looks they threw Nikola Jokic in this game. And none of it mattered. This man went into Rudy Gobert's chest <laughs> a million times overpowered him a bunch in the in the few times where it felt like Gobert got his power under him and he wasn't able to back him down guess what Jokic did a hook like a dominant performance against a four-time all defensive player all a four-time DPOY player like come on I cannot wait to rewatch this game this was not the best Rudy Gobert defensive performance of his career but damn it this man Jokic was unstoppable and I, I go back to think about like have I ever in my life, in the Nikola Jokic MVP era, I don't care about what he did in 2019, 2020. That is before, even though he got a conference finals appearance then, that is before Nikola Jokic was the MVP of the league, right? During this era of Nikola Jokic being the best player in the world and winning MVPs, have I seen anybody stop this man for more than two games at a time? The answer is unequivocally no! No! And again, I'm, I'm going to talk about this more. I, I got to really, really think about it. I got to re remember these are just my initial reactions as the game has ended. Nikola Jokic is probably of my lifetime. And again, I got to think about it. Don't take this at face value. I got to think about it. I got to talk about it on the podcast in a couple of days. Nikola Jokic is either number one, number two, or number three best playoff players of my Lifetime. So I can't talk about Jordan because, again, I was born in 96. So I was there for Jordan, but I was an infant. That doesn't matter. Of my of my lifetime, Jokic in the playoffs is either one, two, or three. And I got to think about it. I got some people in my mind that are contesting these things. But I got to think about it. Because, look, let me let me go to his B-Ball reference page. And this is not going to have today's stats up to date. But, hell, I, I, I want to talk about it with my face cam. Uh, my face cam is uh, uh, right here. Boom. Okay, so these are the playoffs over the last couple years. This series, again, this doesn't count for today's 40-point game. So let's let's not look at these counting stats because they have not been updated. Last series, he went against Anthony Davis. And I think we can all agree Anthony Davis is one of the three to four best defensive players in all of basketball. And, and, and what, what happened in this series? It was 28-16-10. and 10. And Last year in the finals, he went against Bam Adebayo, who's one of the best versatile defenders in all of basketball. I think he finished third in DPOI this year. Jokic in that series averaged 30-14-7. We can go on and on against Anthony Davis again. And that was last year in the conference finals. This man averaged 28, 14, and 12. Whoa! When he went against Draymond Green in 2022, he averaged 31, 13, and 6. Like, like, come on, dude. This man has uh, continued to see great defensive players and say, don't matter. Can't guard me. Like, we, we use the word unguardable very, very loosely in our sport when we talk about it. Hell, Kyrie Irving is unguardable. Luka Doncic is unguardable. Shea Gilles Alexander is unguardable. Liadis Dettacumpo, unguardable. Like, we can go on and on and on. But, like, in the very, very true sense of the word, it does not get better than Nikola Jokic. 
Because if you throw two people at him, which is something we've seen in this game when they had Kyle Anderson as the primary defender and said, hey, Rudy Gobert, you're, you're the best defensive uh, uh, parts of your game is you and the help, right? We're going to have you help. Did not matter. Dunker spot, Aaron Gordon, corner three, Christian Bronk. Christian Braun's three-point confidence has gone up, and that's a little bit scary. Um, it, it's, he's the greatest passer in the league, too. So throw me two bodies. I'm going to make you pay. And we talk about the stat. They said Nikola Jokic was 0-5 in games where he had scored 40 points in the playoff game, at least until tonight. That kind of makes sense to me. Because his first nature, this is the same thing we said about LeBron for the majority of his career, now he's the all-time leading scorer, that his first nature is to play make and to, to get his other guys a, 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 a easy looks. You know what I'm saying? So the times where he had to drop 40 in the playoff game, it's like, damn, nobody else can hoop for me right now? I guess I have to do it. So the idea, if you're the Minnesota Timberwolves, at least later in this game, is like, all right, if Jokic kill us, let's let's neutralize the others. And guess what they were not able to do? Completely neutralize the others. Because in this one, we did not get a crazy Jamal Murray game. But guess what we did do? Just like in game number four of this series, we saw Aaron Gordon be phenomenal. Aaron Gordon was perfect on the field of game number four. I know I didn't get a chance to talk about that. But in this game, he had 18, 10, and 5. Katavis Caldwell Pope hit four threes. I talked about Christian Brown and that, that clutch three-pointer and the confidence that he had to take that three-pointer. Like, it goes on and on and on. So, yes, you want to play me straight up. Okay, I can give you 40. You want to double team me and throw me different looks. Guess what? I can end up with 13 assists and zero turnovers. Like, cut it out. And I was not one of those. Like, I was super intrigued about the series after the 2-0 league for the Minnesota Timberwolves. But never did I think the series was over. I thought that the momentum obviously has shifted to Minnesota. But I would have been ridiculous to come to this or to other, any amount of the podcast and say the Minnesota Timberwolves are winning this series. Because I've seen the Denver Nuggets. Now, I haven't seen them be down 0-2 after losing two games at home. But this is a team that has been my championship pick for some time. Like, this team is that nice. And if there was any team to come back from down 0-2, it's this one. It's not completely over for Minnesota. But boy, is it really, really tough when you got Mike Conley dealing with his Achilles injury, regardless of whether or not Mike Conley was really good or really bad in the first four games of the series. That's just an added body that you lost. And as we see, even though the Knicks dominated today, shout out to the Knicks, um, when you just lose in quality, quality players, that means that either A, you have to shorten your rotation and now your star players are playing even more. And I hate the idea of playing even more minutes when you're playing in Denver because Denver is the hardest place to play according to because the altitude. We either extending our minutes for our star players or we got to have somebody hoop for us that ain't really the guy that we want to hoop for us so Mike Conley being out really really sucked and I thought Minnesota was in this game for the majority of it and as with Anthony Edwards let me see what he finished with Anthony Edwards finished with 18 points 33% of the field 5 for 15 this is his worst performance of the playoffs so far after again just being uh, so very dominant through the first uh, uh, series and a half or so Jaden McDaniels with nine points Car Anthony Towns was the offensive juggernaut today with 23 on 10 of 19 but it was just not enough I mean this bench that had been very phenomenal Nikki Alexander Walker had to start today and he also played a good game but the bench that had been phenomenal with Nikki Alexander Walker and Nas Reed and everybody coming off the bench in the last series has been kind of mute over the last couple of games of this one where Nas Reed ended up with seven points like that's just not going to get the job done especially if the bench that Denver has who all, everybody agreed that Denver the, the one spot of Denver's lineup or a thing about them that's not good is that bench if Christian Brown is giving you 10 and then um, you got Reggie giving you six and in the last game you saw Justin Holiday give you a game it's just crazy and I think that Mike Malone has coached his ass off. And one of the toughest things to do when you're a coach is to sit a player that you love. Peyton Watson has not been able to play over the last couple of games because he doesn't add the three-point element. It just makes it easier for them to be guarded if Peyton Watson's on the court. And I do believe that in the next series, if they do get out of this, we will see Peyton Watson probably reincorporated to the, to the rotation and all. But in this series specifically, we have so many dogs defensively for the Minnesota Timberwolves. You can't have somebody that's not able to be guarded or not respected out there. I do feel like the defensive intensity for the Minnesota Timberwolves has shifted dramatically. We're getting in those first couple games. Anthony, uh, uh, um, Jamal Murray couldn't ball, bring the ball to the court. They were really hounding Nikola Jokic. All of that has kind of died down. And again, DPOY Rudy Gobert got absolutely dominated for the majority of this game. I mean, it's, I honestly don't think there's a single person in the world that would have been able to stop what Jokic did today. Now, there are going to be people that maybe make it a little bit more difficult. I'm not saying Rudy Gobert is the perfect player for this, but, but like, again, we talked Anthony Davis, Bam Adebayo, and Victor Wembanyama hasn't had a playoff series against Jokic just yet, but even in the regular season, I know it's regular season, so maybe shouldn't even talk about, I mean, Jokic averaged 37 ish against the Spurs and that's not all on Wemby, but that's just showcasing this. I don't know if there's a single soul on this planet <laughs> that could stop the avalanche that is Nikola Jokic. What a game, what a performance. 
What a series. Let's just say that. What a series. 